This is Outdated, and welcome to Outdated First Looks. And today we are going to look at Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. This is a hardcover RPG. Actually, interesting factoid, it is the second oldest RPG behind Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons came out, and just a year or two later, Tunnels and Trolls came out. So let's get a look at this book first thing. Let's take a look at its size. And let me see the best way you can tell. The height is the same. As you'll see, the width is not. Tunnels and Trolls is a little wider. You can see that right there, like right here, extends past the DM's guide. Also, this is a big boy, nice and thick. Square by uh, square spine. Not sure about the binding yet. I do not see a ribbon, so which sucks. I always like it when there's ribbons. But this is a first look for you and for me. I have never looked at this thing before. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the back. First created in 1975 at the dawn of role-playing games. The original Tunnels and Trolls gave players simple monsters, pursuing quests, and exploring the unknown. Wait, I think I just read that wrong. Created characters to go forth fighting monsters. That's what it did. Ah, can't talk. This new deluxe edition offers all this with a greatly expanded menu of options for character types and kindreds, special talents and abilities, new twists to magic and spellcasting, and more varieties of combat while maintaining the familiar and essential qualities of that early game and the best features of all previous editions. Ken St. Andre, I hope I said that right, Liz Danforth, probably got that one right, and James Bear Peters, yeah, I think I nailed that one, collaborated to re-examine every element of the game before rewriting this edition from top to bottom. The rules are complete with everything you need to play as hero or game master. As always, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls calls on your imagination. Create your own adventures or explore Troll World itself. Troll World, really? Never before described in such detail, Troll World is the lifelong creation of Ken St. Andre, parts of which were explored by the game's earliest players, including collaborators Danforth and Peters, who are sharing their own localities for the first time as well. This amazingly illustrated book brings back old and little seen classic artwork from the game's early days and all new art, maps, and graphics done especially for this edition by Liz Danforth and Stephen S. Crompton. This is truly the ultimate edition of Tunnels and Trolls. Okay, uh, can I figure out the price tag on this thing? Hmm. Might be $49, maybe. Um, but I can't tell for sure. But either way, let's go ahead and crack this thing open. So interestingly, this came out in 1975. I started playing D&D around 1977, 78. I want to say I was seven years old. Okay, get rid of my plastic. Okay, we have art on board. There's no dust jacket. There's our flat spine. Let's take a look at the binding. And we have, hmm, yeah, there it is, stitched, it's stitched binding. Okay, I saw the eye, but when I looked under it, I couldn't tell, but yeah, it's stitched. I can see the stitches right there. Okay, so we have stitched binding, right? Um, how big is this thing? That's character sheet, that doesn't count. 368 pages, if you count the character sheet. It's a big boy, but it's not that heavy. But it's solid. It's really solid. Okay, so let's go ahead and start taking a quick look. Now, again, this is just a first look. This is not a review. So, ooh, and right there, not wasting space. You're giving me a map of Troll World. Um, is it just me? Or does that kind of look like a dog? Oh, maybe it's supposed to be a dragon. Okay, okay. What's this one? Mainland. It looks like a Pegasus. No, Unicorn. I'm dumb. Uh, Zor, the Eagle Continent. 
Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about these, but nonetheless, at least they use the space, right? We have a nice map. Table of contents. Okay, now this paper on the outside, they're using the end paper here. This is thick matte paper. On Sort of. Not that thick, but it is matte paper. And we get in here. Yeah, you know what? This is all matte paper. And if, it, if this art ends up being black and white, honestly, matte paper absorbs the black ink better. So that could be really, really good. So I'm just going to do some skipping around through here. Um, to just take a look. And we got some nice line art here. I don't know who that is. I don't know if you can make that out, but let's take a look at these folks. All right, he looks sketchy. She looks sketchier, and I think he's a fish. I don't know what's up with that. But I guess I'll find out when I um, actually play the thing. All right, let's see. What do we have? So I know you roll your stats, and speaking of which, your statistics are strength, constitution, dexterity, those should sound familiar, luck, IQ, wizardry, and charisma. And you roll 3d6. Sound familiar? And you put them in order. Now there is one neat little, or two neat little things that I like. One, when rolling your 3d6 for stats, if you roll matches, like all three of them are the same number, so like three ones, three sixes, three twos, whatever, you write that number down and then you roll again and add it to it. And each time you roll triples, you keep going. So you can have superhuman strength, superhuman speed, whatever it is. Wait, where'd speed go? Speed's not even listed. Speed's one of the stats. It's just not, it doesn't have anything. Now the other thing is the way it handles modifiers for race and class, and or for race, it's literally multiplication. So the Hobbs, which are kind of like halflings, I guess, whatever I roll for strength, if I decide my character's a Hob, it, that strength is cut in half. That constitution is doubled. Dexterity is 1.5 times, so they add 50% on top. Same with luck. And then the others are all the same, right? Um, you got leprechaun, fairies. So if you wanted to play Tinkerbell, if that was your thing. Elves, dwarves, humans. I think I've heard of that last one. Okay, you got the height and weight tables. Equipping your character. And some nice line art for some of this, including this crazy thing. Um, the weapons actually have stat requirements so that if you want to use a specific weapon, like let's say I wanted my character to use, let me find a cool weapon, to use a heavy axe. They'd have to have a strength of 18, a dexterity of 10. Yeah, that's what they'd need. Um, any others? Do I have some swords? If I want to use a whip, I'd need strength 13, dexterity 14. So it actually has specific requirements for weapons. It almost feels like I'm playing Dark Souls here. So we have all that. Materials, combat toxins, there's equipment, saving throws. Saving throws are not the same in this game from what I understand as they are in like D&D &D or whatever. Your saving throws are literally uh, basically your attribute checks. And you do those kinds of things a lot. Um, yeah, monster rating has like a number of dice. That's kind of how they do balanced encounters, but balanced encounters honestly aren't that important. Your characters, your players should know when to run like hell. I'm just saying. Um, this line art is very old fashioned and I kind of like that. Although this man's hat looks stupid. I think overall, and she's got a wind machine going behind her. Um, in front of her, but overall this the line art is so reminiscent of 70s Okay, now here. I've always heard that the spells are really well done in this game So here we have our spells and the spells have just a really basic naming system like oh go away right? And boop there you go. Um, well, so here they are. This is all the information you need for spells Detect magic hocus focus. It's elementary. See everything under here. That's all you need it's good, not going to take a thousand years to read a spell explanation whenever it's pretty simple. Knock, knock, know your foe, lock tight, oh, go away. Oh, there it is. Take that, you fiend. 
Unerring Blade, Willow Wisp. Now I made it to level two. And it's just, just that's it. I mean, I can just zip right through. We're in fourth level spells now, fifth level, seventh level. I'm jumping a little bit ahead. Tenth level. If I'm not mis 14th level, if I'm not mistaken, too, your spell levels and your character class levels are the same. So, like, if I'm remembering correctly, you can cast an 18th level spell when you're 18th level. It's, it's that simple, right? And I, I'm so glad. That makes a lot more sense if I'm not mistaken. Again, this matte paper is really nice. I don't know if I'm going to have to crack the glue on this to uh, make sure that this thing stays open. But when I get to the midpoint, we're going to see how it does. Elaborations. Rules, expansions, alternate ideas, and additional suggestions to customize your deluxe Tunnels and Trolls house rules. Hmm. Okay, monsters. So I guess we're about to get into a bestiary. Oh, yeah. We got a bestiary. It doesn't look like we have images for everything. But we do have some images. We're about halfway. Stays closed okay. Let's take a look all the way back to the front where we were. Try that. Okay, no. How about the back? No. Okay. All right. Let's get back to where we were. We're back in the bestiary. area. Let's just keep going. Get into languages. Um, is he with child? He kind of looks like me. Is he with child? No judgments made. Uh, let's see. Accessories. You can do miniatures if you want to. I prefer a theater of the mind nowadays. I think the miniatures have made everything take too long. Troll World Atlas. So here's a section about Troll World itself. Okay, for a minute there, I thought they were all naked. Um, so of course I flipped further back. Whoa, what is this? Oh, it's a timeline. Okay, this is a timeline. It breaks down different sections. The Dragon Continent and all that um the eastern isles of the great ocean so yeah we've got a lot of information whoa we got a color section <laughs> look it's the deluxe tunnels and trolls color section this is the fifth edition cover pre-painting fifth and seventh edition covers this is the one we have now Larutha'a, the Death Goddess, Bjorn the Great, Troll World Notable, Gavina, White Gull, Danforth Art in the Third Dimension. Okay, now there's a nice little map. And more in depth of that one continent, one side of the continent, the city of Kazan. Liz painted two color covers for classic TNT solos, including the cover for the limited edition Elven Lords and Sewers of Oblivion. More recently, she collaborated with Stephen S. Crompton to create digitally colored covers for the new edition of Buffalo Castle and the Deluxe City of Terrors. So this one is from Elf Lord, 1986, Sewers of Oblivion, 1980, Buffalo Castle, 2012, when they released that. Um, that's something I forgot to mention. Um, Tunnels and Trolls is actually very famous for more than just being the second oldest RPG ever made. It also was the first one to ever do solitaire gaming, where you do not need a GM. You can actually play without one, and it's literally their adventures. Oh crap, right when I get to adventures, no kidding. Their adventures, their solitaire adventures, actually predate Choose Your Own Path books. Like Pick a Path Adventure books, they are the first ones to actually ever do it. That is really neat. And right here, we're actually given one. Abyss, a solitaire adventure for dead characters. Okay, then. Um, interesting. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and zip through this. I don't want to spoil anything. I might use this down the road. Um, it's not super long. Then Into the Zor, a Game Master adventure, meaning it's somebody with Game Master actually helps, on the Eagle Continent. Okay, the, and so that's that one. That's two adventures. 
I'm zipping through these. Still going. Again, still going. That's a long one. End matter, yes. That's really what they call this part of a book. Look it up. <laughs> okay, so there's weapons glossary. Now we're getting the images of the stuff we didn't get before. So is that a Nodachi? Nice. And then we get to the index. Yeah, you gotta have an index. Main rules index. Wait, there's more than one? So you got the main rules index. You got the troll world people and places index. You got the acknowledgements in alphabetical order. That's a lot of names. The developer afterwards for deluxe tunners and trolls. You've got other products. I literally recently ordered this and this, I believe. I'm going to get this as well. Um, these are all solitaire adventures, and I'm totally going to play this. Um, I wouldn't mind getting that map. GM screen, even though I may just play this as a solitaire thing. I've got that one that I'm going to get eventually. There's a lot of stuff here, and there's our character sheet. And the back, we got the map again. Is it the same color? Let me see. Yep, same color. Okay, and that's it. So this is Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls by Flying Buffalo Incorporated. The second oldest RPG ever. The one to create solitaire play. And I am really looking forward to getting into this, reading it, because this gives me some serious old school vibes. But I've heard that the way the game itself plays is like a little more modern. So I am really looking forward to checking that out. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Outdated First Looks. If so, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let people know. You know, like if you know other people that do RPGs that would like to hear somebody's opinion, you want to add stuff in the chat. Uh, like, example, I never heard of Tunnels and Trolls till the late 80s. Never actually played it. This is the first time I've owned any Tunnels and Trolls product. Have you ever heard of it or played it? Are there other RPGs you played besides the one we all probably started on D&D? I could name quite a few. I'll probably save that for whenever, you know, for episodes of Old School Rewind, which by the time you see this video will have actually premiered. So, um, hope to see you next time. Peace.